Hello friends, welcome to Coppel Institute's online training portal. Today we are going to cover enterprise value. In simple terms, enterprise value is the total value of a firm. Let's say we want to calculate the total value of a firm. The value of the firm will be nothing but the total value of assets owned by it. Let's assume it is dollar fifteen million. Also, we know a simple accounting equation that is assets is equal to liabilities plus owners equity. Assets such as land, building, plant and machinery are the application of funds. And liabilities such as debt, preferred stock plus owners equity are the sources of funds used to finance these assets. So looking at this equation, we can calculate the total value of a firm either from the asset or the liability side. However, when we talk about value of a firm, it should be current or market value. But here, we are calculating the total value by considering the value of total assets which are recorded at historical cost. That means, in order to calculate the enterprise value, we need to find the market value of each and every asset. Don't you think valuing each and every asset is a difficult and tedious task? Alternatively, we can calculate the market value of the liabilities or the sources of funds. Now, let's understand this the component for calculating enterprise value from the liability side. The first component is the market value of equity which is known as market capitalization. Market capitalization is nothing but the total number of outstanding shares multiplied by current market price. The next component is total debt. Let's first understand what is debt. Any interest bearing liability is debt. Total debt includes long term debt such as term loans, bonds, debentures as well as short term debt such as short term loans, overdraft, cash credit facility etc. After this we consider preferred stock. Preferred stock is a hybrid security which has some features of equity and some features of debt. Also it has preferential rights over equity for dividend and capital distribution. Next we include minority interest also known as non-controlling interest. Minority interest is the stake in a subsidiary company not owned by the parent company. For example, ABC owns 70% stake in XYZ, the remaining 30% stake is minority interest. Finally, this is the value we need to pay to acquire or invest in the assets of a firm. Assets includes cash and cash equivalents such as marketable security, short term investments which technically reduce the acquiring cost. That is why we deduct cash and cash equivalent to arrive at enterprise value. In nutshell, enterprise value is the total economic value of a firm at a given point of time. Now, let's understand this concept by taking an example of the company Walmart. The first step is to calculate the market cap for which we require the total number of outstanding shares. This can be sourced either from the latest filing, press release or stock exchange. For Walmart, we have extracted the cover page of its latest quarterly report that is 10Q for sourcing the latest number of outstanding shares which we can see at the bottom of the page that is approximately 3.28 billion. The second sub component of market cap is current market price which can be sourced from the company's website or stock exchange. Current market price should be the previous day closing price which in our case is $78. 8.75. Therefore, the market cap is 
3 billion. Next, we need to calculate the total debt. Looking at Walmart's balance sheet, we can calculate total debt by adding long term debt as well as short term debt. Total long term debt comprises long term debt and long term obligation under capital lease. Total short term debt comprises short term borrowings, long term debt due within one year and obligation under capital lease due within one year. By adding all these items, we arrive at total debt for Walmart which is approximately $57.08 billion. Next in line is preferred stock. Walmart does not have preferred stock in its balance sheet. After this, we add minority interest reported as non-controlling interest in Walmart's balance sheet that is approximately $5.59 billion. Lastly, we need to deduct cash and cash equivalents reported under current asset that is $8.86 billion. By applying this equation, this gives us the total EV of Walmart which is approximately $308.98 billion. That's all from our side for today's session. Thank you for watching this video. You can also visit our website that is www.copalinstitute.com to, to know more about our offerings. For further queries, please feel free to reach us at queries at copalinstitute.com. You can also contact us at the telephone number shown on the screen.